Hi, welcome to another Woo Wednesday. I'm Little Woo, and I'm here to address another life question I received. This week's question is, what to do when you only want to be friends and someone else wants more? So the first scenario would be if nothing had ever happened between you, it was always very clear from your perspective that you only want to be friends, uh, whether you expressed it uh, purely through your gestures and your energy or your words or you had an actual discussion about it the first scenario is that nothing has happened and but you can you know that they want more and you're not ready or you're not interested so what to do of course it's it's important to have that discussion and it's a very tough one everyone dreads the let's just be friends uh, conversation uh, the person who receives that is dreading it the person who has to share that truth is is finding it really hard to do that too because usually you care a lot about each other already uh, or you have definitely have feelings and it nobody likes to even think of the word rejection so first thing i would say is to not perceive it as a rejection because within our consciousness if we perceive that when we say no we're rejecting someone then that actually frames it you know energetically frames it as a rejection even when it's not truly the case and someone else might say well anytime someone says no it's a rejection well that's making something very personal versus framing it as that person is speaking the truth and they're gifting me with something else and I'm not being rejected I'm just being given uh, a, a different kind of gift and so we need to reframe how we perceive a no uh, whether it's a friend or a business partner or a lover uh, anytime someone says no to us on the receiving end if we learn how to receive the no gracefully and really gracefully then that means that we accept it we don't deny it we don't try to hide it under the rug and just keep moving forward and hope that that person will change their mind but truly receive the no as uh, a gift because when someone gives us their truth that's one of the biggest gifts that we can receive even if it's uncomfortable or unpleasant and often the truth can be uh, a little bit cutting sometimes when we when we want it something else but the truth is clean and I always say that when you have a clean cut it'll heal nicely and it won't fester and truth is like that the truth does cut sometimes it doesn't feel good and you know it can be very painful and immediately it can be shocking and we might bleed a little bit but it'll heal because it was clean but the more resistant we are to receiving someone's truth the more frightened they become to tell us the truth and so that that leads people to often to uh, start to hold back their truth and try to sugarcoat the truth, uh, not tell us everything that they really feel, and then it, that gets muddy. And then when they finally say things, because it's not the truth, it gets muddy and our cuts are not clean and we don't heal and it takes a long time. So when, when we give the truth, so that on that side of things, just trust that it's clean and it's better for all concerned in the long run. So that first scenario where nothing has happened and you're just trying to share your truth, that you're not ready for anything other than friendship, you're not interested in anything other than friendship, you have to just face that initial discomfort. As the truth speaker, you have to face the discomfort and you can reframe some of the discomfort by realizing that you're actually helping everyone in the long run. So you're not rejecting it. So take that word right out of your thought process and treat it as, I am giving them a beautiful truth it might be uncomfortable but it's clean and it's real and the truth can always change later you might you know over time you might feel differently and you realize and that's when you need to give your next truth and that's the thing with people is that truth does change our feelings do change uh, it doesn't mean that we should wait around for someone forever just because uh, we think oh they'll change their mind it's just that you know we all we're all evolving and when someone g gives us their truth in the moment if we just fully accept it then we're we're contributing to the truth being part of our joint friendship or our evolution no matter what happens in the future and so the second scenario is that you've actually started to get involved with someone and some romance or sexuality has occurred and some forms of different forms of intimacy and during that process you realize that you're actually not ready or interested to go further and that's another tr a truth point that's necessary so you need to really stop and take stock and converse with each other really to have a real heart-to-heart -heart dialogue 
and this heart to heart might involve again some truths that are, might feel cutting um, but they are again clean you're telling the truth in the moment I don't feel ready or I don't feel that's the direction I want to take and again the other person's uh, work is to try to receive this truth gracefully uh, and work with it even though that might feel even more difficult because you've already started going in that direction you've already been intimate or you've already been starting to dream together and that's often the hardest part is that uh, one or two one of the people has started to dream they started to imagine you in a certain role in their life and then now you're asking them to dissolve that vision you know to let go of that vision because you're not ready or you're not interested so having empathy for the other person doesn't mean that you should sugarcoat because ultimately they want to know why you're not interested and if you do know why you can find the truth and express it to them in your own way that will help them realize that yes there is there is a reason and they're not going crazy that's not oh you know when we say it's just it's not you it's it's me we can you know that there is a truth to that too that it's just our own feeling and our own readiness and our own unique chemistry and it really is that but when we just say that as the only statement it leaves them kind of floating with no sense of groundedness as to what has happened why did we change directions so I think it's it's really part of our own responsibility and and our gift to someone to be able to express a little bit more be a little bit more articulate and part of our articulation is to not be afraid not be afraid of speaking truth. It doesn't mean that we have to be uh, uh, un unkind, but kindness is being truthful. So if you're not attracted to someone, you don't feel sexually drawn to them, you can just speak that truth. Because in our lifetimes, we're all going to meet people that we're not sexually drawn to, that we don't want to explore that way with. Uh, and then we also meet people that we don't ever want to be business partners with. We also meet people that we don't want to even really spend time with. And it's not, it isn't personal, yet it is personal. You know, it's like that paradox. That there is your own unique chemistry and life experience that creates a certain desire for certain experiences. And sometimes it does collide with someone else's path, and sometimes it doesn't. And in this world where truth is so hard to take, and we are actually all becoming more truthful, and social media is actually a platform where people are learning to speak a little bit more, uh, more than before, even as much as we try to share our best sides, and some of us share our, our, our heartbreaks on, online as well, and our dark times, and that's very helpful, that transparency. Um, but it's up to you how much transparency you're ready to share but practice practice being open practice being more truthful knowing that it's actually a form of kindness to be real with someone and that trust that they're strong enough to handle the truth and that's often something that we don't give people credit for we think oh no they're gonna disintegrate if I tell them the truth or they're gonna be wounded for life well if they if they receive your no as a lifetime rejection and they continue to use that as a form of self-defeating thought then it started well before you arrived in their life it's it's a pain that they're dealing dealing with and it's part of their evolution to to heal and let go of that as a personal rejection so all of us have received a no before I have received no many times and it did hurt initially but you know what? It saved me a lot of grief later. It's much better than having someone who's only half there, only half interested. That's way more painful than someone who told you from the start that they're not interested. Or the moment that they realize that they're not, then they shifted gears and they told you the truth. It saves us all a lot of time and grief when we share the truth with each other. So I first I want to give a thank you to everyone who's ever been courageous enough to tell someone else the truth that they weren't interested in pursuing relationship. Um, and they save that person years of grief and for those who found it really hard to do it you know what happened you know that you spent years with someone and it ultimately was still a gift because you you learn about each other but there is a teaching in that that you were with someone and you didn't speak your truth and that hurt both of you ultimately in the long run and people can feel that even if you manage to coast your way through and never tell them the truth they feel that something is just off and they always, for the rest of the relationship, they wonder, what did I do, or what was wrong, what was going on? And that discomfort is a legacy that we have to live with when we don't speak truth. 
And so I hope that when you're faced in a situation where there's a lot of emotion and you're in a relationship or you're you're in a friendship and you realize that you must speak the truth with them about what you feel or what you don't feel, that you have to face that initial, uh, it's almost like a tsunami. I call it a tsunami of emotion. And you have to stand there and let it just wash over you and know that you'll survive that and that your gift of truth will only cut in a moment but will heal clean. But if you don't give the truth in that moment, then you're potentially causing wounds that will fester within both of you. And so it's your responsibility to be able to tell the truth even if the other person has a very strong reaction and you're terrified of the reaction. You don't want to hurt their feelings. You don't want to cause them anger or grief. So our own discomfort with emotion is part of the reason why we don't want to tell the truth. We don't want to hurt anyone. We don't want anyone to be upset. And so being able to handle someone's upsetness, being able to handle their grief helps us speak truth, helps us be able to tell someone else how we really feel. And when we don't feel overloaded with grief or or guilt, then our truth comes out even cleaner because often it's guilt that makes the truth come out all muddy. And then we end up saying things that we don't mean and we end up being too harsh or we being, end up being too sweet with our truth. Um, we don't want to be too harsh. We don't want to be too sweet and sugar-coated because then the truth is muddied again by sweetness or by uh, discomfort and, and guilt. So clean truth, very powerful practice to give to each other. Uh, so practice every time you realize that to, to you know, first take some time to make sure that is your truth and then be able to offer it with love, with absolute love. Offer the truth with absolute love, not sugar-coated, not muddied with guilt. And then the person, no matter what their reaction, one day will appreciate that you gave them the truth and that it took a lot of courage to do that. So I, I send you many blessings during this time of great decisions and truth-telling and truth-speaking, sharing the gift of truth. Thank you again for joining me on Woohoo Wednesday. Stay in touch with me long term. Uh, go to my website, littlewoo.org, and look for the uh, octopus so that you can add your name and email, and uh, we'll get connected that way. Thank you so much for staying in touch. Lots of love. Mwah.